Hey, I'm wearing a spooky shirt. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like the emo that I am, I got it at Spencer's, so you know it's authentic. This past weekend, as of recording this, my little brother went to tour a college, and mom and dad went with him. I have the whole house to myself and a 4K TV at my disposal. What better use of my time in that situation than watching seven horror movies in one weekend? My mind was fried in the best possible way. While doing this, I decided to document it. So all of these were films I had not seen before and I decided to voice memos my initial thoughts once I had finished them. So what I've compiled here is those voice memos accompanied by looped trailer footage, and it's just a very informal, minimally edited video of my first rambles after seeing some classics, and some new ones. Don't expect this to be the most polished video ever, I just wanted to give you the experience of me rambling about movies for about an hour, and I hope that this experiment goes well. Forgive me if the voice memos that I took while pacing around frantically aren't exactly the most organized. My voice might quiver a little bit because, you know, I'm pacing around the house and each step kind of shakes everything in my body, including my vocal cords, whatever. There are lots of plosions. I'm not sitting at a desk with a mic like I am right now. That being said, let's get right to it. Here's Michael's Movie Hole, the Halloween Spooktacular. First up is The Fly. Okay, I just finished The Fly, and my god. Oh, this movie is so gross. It's so gross. I squirmed and freaked out repeatedly. And that is praise, by the way. But if you are squeamish at all, I mean, I don't know if this is a surprise because it's made by David, David Cronenberg, but don't watch this movie. But gotta say, as... Um, a piece of work. Let me check who did the special effects real quick. The makeup effects are great. My god, this film won the Oscar for best special effects makeup. Well, well, well deserved. I think Jeff Goldblum wore like five pounds of makeup at any given point during his transformation. Oh, so good. And I gotta say, Jeff Goldblum, um, great charismatic star he really brings heart to the creature like as more and more of seth brundle is taken away and he becomes brundle fly jeff goldblum still somehow makes you care for the creature and gives it a little charm my god it takes the concept of the original 1950s like vincent price original and stretches it to the grotesque to the erotic to the dramatic like these are all David Cronenberg's specialties that I'm talking about. And he applies them perfectly to this concept that was practically made for him. And also I gotta say, I was very impressed with Howard Shore's score. Um, very dramatic, very sweeping. Points out the existential tragedy of this character. And I gotta say, I heard about this movie as a little kid and you know, it's one of those things like the human centipede where you look up Google Images, if you dare, and like as a little kid, you go, oh my God, huh, this is so scary, and I would just lie awake at night. Because body horror, it's always been the biggest thing, the idea of like transforming into a monster and you can't do anything to stop it. Um, it's so tragic and sad, but it also like reaches me on a deep level for some reason as a horror concept. Anyway, it's nice to finally see it. Uh, yeah, really, really loved this one. Um, like I said, if you are squeamish, stay away, because there are some scenes in this thing. And I know that they edited the film down even. It, it's uncompromising either way. <laughs> oh, uh, I really, really enjoyed it and strongly recommend it. it I can see why it's a classic. 
All right, so up next, I'm going to watch The Thing. And I'm excited because I have wanted to see this for forever. Okay, so just finished The Thing. And I got to say, you, you know, I mean, it makes me want to see Halloween again. Um, and also all the other, like, John Carpenter, you know, classics. But... Is this his masterpiece? Like, I, I'm i tempted to say yes. It seems like the suspense elements that he mastered over his career, I mean, they're at their apex here. Um, very high concept stuff like he usually does. Contained stories, you know? Anyway, I just was observing that. Once again, Ennio Morricone, the, the late, great Ennio Morricone, did a phenomenal job with the score. Usually I expect John Carpenter to make his own music, but um, I'm glad that he got Morricone on this one because it is a great score. Um, there's some pretty gross stuff. I was eating lunch, I was, I was having a shawarma, and all of a sudden this dude like breaks apart into like gross green goo and guts and stuff and his head grows spider legs and crawls around and i like had to set my fork down for a sec just to process that because like (laughs) i wasn't gonna eat (laughs) any uh hot steaming meat after seeing that (laughs) um kurt russell does a good job anchoring the film in his leading performance and red letter media jay um pointed this out for Predator, and I feel the same about this movie. Um, I kind of wish they didn't have that shot where the UFO comes like across the screen and zooms to Earth in the beginning, because if that were excluded, we would know just as much as the main characters, and we'd have to figure it out, like, what is this thing? But now... We know that it's an alien from outer space. That might have been a studio thing where they were like, John, they're not going to know what's happening. We got to put something in to like explain it to the audience that it's an alien. And so they did. But I mean, it's a minor complaint. That's like a nitpick. Um, John Carpenter does great character work. He makes each of the many cast members memorable. Uh, as far as characterization goes, just enough to get you invested and, you know, remember everybody. Uh, Doesn't spend too much time on it, though. He he has just enough characterization in all his scripts before he gets started on the high-concept horror or sci-fi things um, so that you care about the people involved. And I was very impressed, as always, with that in this script, just how efficient it is. I was very thrilled with the whole paranoia aspect of this film because it has some really intense, like, gnarly gore and body horror. But the real source of the tension is that thing that any of these people trapped in this desolate wasteland where you can't run away, you have to stay in this base with all these people, any of them could be the monster at any time. It was just kind of neat to see such a... Red Scare Witch Hunt type movie where no one trusted anyone. Um, There's been some great effective horror about paranoia like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Um, This kind of has the same effect only with more crazy, crazy gore. Like, my god. It's like the cherry on top. It would be just as thrilling and suspenseful but that gore... Man, it's gnarly. It's sick. I am a big fan of the creature effects in this film. Because it it's like pseudo-realistic because the organs are all organs, right? But the monster is like morphing into like different creatures, like a dog or a, a guy, whatever. And some of the bodies that you find that are dissected and stuff are like mid transformation. So it has so many forms that it takes and so many different perversions of natural biology that you see. And it's just really inventive. It has you going, which, like, what, what twisted image 
and grotesquity of the human body am I about to see next? And it's used sparingly. It's not constant. It's just when the film needs to make a statement, get some impact, ratchet up the thrills, boom, there's a punctuation mark of gore. And it's really cool, really effective, very inventive. It's not, it doesn't make me as squeamish as The Fly because The Fly is focused on like intimate details of one person's slow transformation. This film has moments of extreme graphic, just creature effects that are just really cool. Um, this film is a masterpiece, virtually perfect, virtually flawless. Just take that little studio mandated um, shot from the beginning where there's a UFO approaching the earth and you have yourself a nice little isolation horror film. Uh, wonderful. Watch it with your kids or your grandparents. So up next, I'm going to watch Bram Stoker's Dracula, the uh, Francis Ford Coppola adaptation of Dracula. Um, I'm really excited for a few reasons. Number one, I think that 90s Francis Ford Coppola is the last period of his career where he actually makes decent movies before he just, I guess, forgets how to be the former director of The Godfather. I mean, Godfather Part 3 was the warning sign, but like once the 90s ended, that was it. No more essential Coppola films. Uh, and so this, I mean, this is such a respected movie, relatively speaking, it seems. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing another kind of neat Coppola film. A bit more of a deep cut, but a neat one. Uh, I'm also looking forward to Gary Oldman, of all people, being Dracula, because he is one of my favorite all-time actors, especially just the way he delves into each character and makes it his own be it um, his pimp character from True Romance to Sirius Black to uh, Chief Gordon in the Dark Knight trilogy. I, I just love him. I love him in just about everything I see him in. And I look forward to seeing just how bad Keanu Reeves's British accent is. I've heard the legends. Anyway, let's, uh, let's watch this movie.